another episode of The Wild Table. Now here in New Zealand we have a whole bunch of introduced species that you can hunt year round and one species that I've been meaning to get my hands on for a bloody long time are peacocks. So today we have the invitation to a farm to come hunt some peacocks. All right, so um, we're here today with Andrew. Um, Andrew works on this farm and he's the, he, he does a whole lot of hunting around here actually, so he knows exactly where the peacocks are. So, mate, oh, I'm trying to do that. <laughs> Thanks very, very much for the invite for starters. Um, is it much of a hunt from here? Like, is it very far? Um, well, it's about 500 meters up to the top up there, um, but there could possibly be peacocks down in the bottom here, so we'll just have to take it easy and take it slow. And, yeah, just see how we go. Yep. Spot on, man. Let's do it. Cool. Okay, so obviously peacocks is not something that I've hunted before. Um, I do know this much, that big birds, you know, turkeys, peacocks, etc. Are, are quite intelligent. So generally, you got to make sure you sneak up to them. You can't just trudge across the field and hoping that they'll stay there, because they won't. Now Andrew just told me that the peacocks generally tend to sort of hang out on the, on the edge of the grass just before the trees. So fingers crossed, we'll be able to just sneak over this old rise over here. Maybe there'll be some birds sort of just on the verge. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here. Peacock is one game species that I have been itching to go after. In true to Andrew's words, it doesn't take us long at all to locate the first bird. I am fizzing. This is the first time I am seeing a true wild peacock. However, true to my own words, this peacock checked us well before we caught on to him. And he is making a sneaky exit. Quick smart. <laughs> Good. I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. This is supposed to be a hunt after all. And Andrew assures me that there will be plenty more chances, so spirits remain high. And thankfully this farm also has an array of other tasty critters on offer. chances for a peacock, but at least that's a hair on the table. There's one big hog right over there, but he's just not coming any closer, he knows. But there's some other big hogs to our left. He's just not coming any closer. My two to three is only on his for about 100 meters and he's like twice the distance, so I don't want to cock it up. So I think we're just going to sneak around. There's another bird down here that's, that's mouthing off, so fingers crossed we can get there. 
As I said, spirits are high and I'm truly enjoying these cunning birds knowing ways. We're in essence locked in a kind of a game. No you see me, no you don't. So in a bit to get the upper hand, we sneak up to the same field but from a different angle. And here I get a much closer look at the same bird. He's hit. Leave those be. Shoot him. Man, there's definitely one down. I hit the other one too, but he's still, he's still moving. He's still moving, eh? <laughs> there's those turkeys as well. Just ducking behind a tree. Yep, let's do that. So definitely down one. The other one's still alive, so I'm gonna try and sneak up to them. And there's also a bunch of wild turkeys, so. See how we go. Hey, got it. Yeah, you got it. The peacock's down, it's just over here. But the other one just snuck in behind a tree further towards the fence line up there. Man. Chase. Far out. Wow. Man, that is incredible. Look at the plumage on that bird. Unbelievable. Actually unreal. Wow. This one was a really clean hit as well. Man. Far up. That was just unbelievable. Look at that bird. That has just got to be one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. It's up close. Hey, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I know they're on a farm and, you know, that it's actually really easy to do, but They're still an incredibly intelligent species and they, you know, you still have to hunt them. Like you can't just rock up and expect to shoot one. Like it might have just as well turned out that we walked away from this farm today without shooting one. It's not that easy. Um, and they're introduced in New Zealand, you know, they don't, there's no regulation for them. They're not a game bird. Um, so it's just up to regular hunters like me to um, make sure that the population stays in control. And I'm beyond stoked to harvest a couple of birds. Hopefully, that was the other one put out of its misery. You can hear how many of them there are. I just really wish that, other, that, uh, that the other hit had been a clean hit as well. So I really hope that Andrew just put the final um, touches to him so to speak. I'm actually I, I really want to get over there to have a look. That, this is unbelievable um, and I really want to come back to honor this bird in a second but I want to make sure that that other bird is good. So. Be 
beautiful turkey to boot. Incredible birds, eh? To explain what happened here, I got what I thought was a solid hit on the first peacock. Then, there was a big flurry of activity during which I managed to kill two more birds. But, in the meantime, the first peacock scarpered, a fact that would haunt me long after this hunt. We never do find this bird, and to say I'm gutted doesn't even begin to describe my feelings. However, misery and fortune are closely related. Yeah, my wife will want them. Really? Yeah, she'll look after him. So he's, he's alive and he'd probably be about the same size as Georgie, actually. Oh, uh, bring it home. So I'll give it a go because he seems to be not quite as lively as Johnny. He's got his little mouth open. I'll keep him warm and see what happens, eh? Okay. Alright. See ya. Bye. Bye. So despite the loss of one bird, I choose to focus on what went right, and with a grateful heart, we end this hunt. Alright, Andrew, <laughs> uh, the Holy Trinity, <laughs> got a hare, got a beautiful turkey and got a, uh, just a stunning peacock. Um, yeah, just want to take the, just basically take the chance to say thanks very much. Not a problem. It's one of those things like I feel like we're, we're kind of living in a time where hunting is becoming a little bit more rare, you know, and it's a little bit of a struggle to get young people like into it in a sense and like it really takes a good bugger to say yes, come over and do some hunting and show you the ropes and so thanks very much for the patience. No, oh, that's all good. Thank you coming over and shooting some pests off the farm because otherwise, yeah, they just get out of control and um, yeah, they need to be shot. Um, Yep, no, we did a good job and we've got some rescue rescue babies to take home and try and revive. I don't know if the little magpie will make it, but we'll give it a go anyway. So, um, yeah, uh, we've done good. Thanks, mate. Much appreciated, eh? No worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's been good. Peacock. Thanks, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, took you too, man. It's beautiful. Yep. Welcome back to my garage again. So obviously we've had a nice successful hunt yesterday with Andrew. Um, and to say I'm wrapped is really the least. I'm absolutely stoked to have gotten this bird on board. We've been wanting to hunt peacock for such a long time and to have this bird lying here today is just, just an honor. Um, I'm really stoked with this. And I'm excited for uh, this bird for two reasons. I'm really excited to eat it. But I'm also really excited to do something with the feathers because these birds just have such an incredible plumage. So, I put the peacock in the freezer last night because, um, and this is something you need to be aware of if you're going to be hunting large birds. Large birds quite often, if not always, have something called bird mites. They're little mites, a little similar to uh, human head lice, so they're quite gross and they're pretty much under the plumage of the birds. Wild turkeys have them and wild peacocks will definitely also have them. I'm kind of hoping that putting them in the freezer overnight might have killed a lot of those mites. So when we're plucking them, they're not going to be crawling all over our arms. Bird mites can't survive in the human body, so it's not something to be super concerned about, but it is kind of gross and I'm hoping that we can minimize it. Um, so we're going to pluck this bird, we're going to put all the feathers into individual compartments, and then we're going to take the naked bird upstairs and we're going to make something beautiful with it. So just like there's more than one way to skin a cat, there's also more than one way to uh, pluck a bird. Um, you could, if you really wanted to, just take a knife to it and basically skin the bird and then all the feathers would come off with the skin. You could do that. But most of the time we don't want to do that because one, we want the skin on the bird because it becomes nice and crispy and two, we also don't really want the skin left on the feathers, right? We want to remove the feathers from the skin so that we have a nice clean product that we can work with later also. Um, so my suggestion would be that on a peacock, plucking is the way to go. Um, and essentially what I would do is I would start um, 
from the tail and work my way up. I'm gonna pull all the tail feathers out first, which come out the easiest, um, and then gradually work our way up um, all the way to the head. Plucking a bird, especially a big bird like this, is not super easy. A lot of those feathers are quite tough. Um, so it is a little bit of work and you definitely are going to have to put that in. But honestly, with something as beautiful as this, it has got to be worth it. Fire up. Gorgeousness. Okay, okay, so we've just taken all of the feathers off, which is incredible. So we've got these big bunches of tail feathers and wing feathers, and then also like lots of the fine down, pretty much from all the different parts of the bird. Uh, peacocks are really cool in the aspect that they just have all of these like, totally different feathers and totally different colors of different parts of their body. So we've got all the feathers to one side, we plucked the bird, and then I've butterflied it, and so basically just open it up completely. Um, and I've just pulled a couple of the key organs out of it. So. If you don't know this, this might be quite interesting. Birds have a crop, which basically sits at the top of their neck, which is where, they, which is the, where the food goes once they swallow it, and then it goes from the crop down to the gizzard. And the gizzard, because birds don't have teeth, is basically a really strong celled organ that has these really strong cell walls. And with the help of uh, little rocks and sand that the birds swallow, that gizzard organ grinds the food down to um, a digestible matter, which then passes through the digestive tract. So. This is the crop, okay, so basically once the birds eat what they eat, which you can see is a whole lot of vegetation, grass, leaves, um, and if you look close enough, I'm sure there'll be bugs and crickets and that kind of stuff in there as well. And then it goes from the crop, gets swallowed, and gets passed down into the gizzard. Now this is the gizzard. You'd be forgiven to think that it, it looks very similar to the heart. I'm gonna cut that right open. We'll see that it has these like really really strong tough cell walls and right inside of there you basically find like everything that the um, the bird's been eating together with a whole bunch of little rocks and stuff you can hear it I'm dropping in them you know, it's literally just gravel and so with the help of the gravel and these really strong cell walls the birds basically grinding the food down into a digestible matter So, welcome back to the kitchen. We've plucked the bird and put all the feathers where they needed to be, and then I've quartered the bird, cutting it into four uh, somewhat equally large pieces. Now, I've had a good think about what to do with peacock, seeing as peacock is not the kind of bird that you're gonna get to shoot on a regular basis. And, after speaking to some chefs, I've decided to make a coq en vent. Okay, so with the coq en vent, which uh, obviously being a French term for a recipe, it's actually really not a complicated recipe at all. What we do is, first of all, we're going to take the bacon or pancetta, we're going to fry it until it's golden brown, then we're going to remove that from the pan. We're going to use the bacon grease that's already in the pan to brown the salted and peppered pieces of uh, peacock, in this case, chicken normally. And then we're going to remove that once it's uh, um, gone brown as well. And then we're going to use the same oil that's still in the pan to also saute the mushrooms. And then once all the ingredients have uh, thoroughly been browned and sauteed, basically you're gonna add the whole lot to a nice heavy cast iron dish, add some dry white wine um, and a few uh, seasonings to it. All right, so this dish has been simmering on the stove for the last hour or so, and it's just unbelievably fragrant and delicious. Like that sauce with the bacon and the white wine is just to die for. Um, Peacock being a game bird naturally takes a little bit longer to break down and start becoming a sort of nice and fork tender than regular chicken. So like a, a regular coq au recipe will call for about 40 minutes of simmering. This is probably more like an hour, an hour and a half or even two hours if you want to get it really, you know, to the point where it's falling off the bone. However, this is just at the right place right now. It's fragrant and delicious. I'm just going to add a little bit of cream to it. We'll simmer it for another 10 minutes and then we're gonna dig into this bad boy because it is yum. I know that you can't smell this, but I can, and this is so good. This is one of those classic French dishes that is just a winner every single time. 
there's a, there's a big honoring and a big level of respect towards animals that we've kind of forgotten about, you know? And I really think that through this process of capturing wild food, bringing it home and making a beautiful meal out of it, we're reconnecting those roots, the stuff that really makes us tick. Yeah. If you haven't tried peacock and you get the chance, I reckon do it. It's really good.